Hi, everybody. This is Chad Saliga, drummer for Weapons of a New, and you're listening to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. Stay blessed. We're putting the band back together. The numbers all go to 11. I'm talking about bands that rock. Led Zeppelin. What about Sabbath? ACDC. Motorhead. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. I get up above the ground and raise my head days like this. Think I should be dead. One for Satan, two for me. Let's cheat the devil. It's fun. Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeff Unted, and with me in Dog Bowl Studios is... Coach Nez. You can find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Libsyn or any pod catchers, like our Facebook page, or follow us on Twitter at No Shock Pod. You can also find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Rock Rage Radio every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Central Time. Our sponsor is Ragged Records, located in downtown Rock Island, Illinois, soon to be coming back to downtown Davenport, Iowa. We would like to thank the Hong Kong Sleepover for letting us use their music for our intro and bumper ending. This week's guest is... Chad Slega. Of Weapons of a New. Yeah, and he's got uh, Black Star Writers. And also Black Label Society. And, and Breaking Benjamin. And Breaking Benjamin. Yeah. So yeah, uh, he was a great interview. Uh Lots of good story to tell. Yeah, Any, anything else you'd like to shed on this one? No, he's just really excited about his new band, Weapons of a New. Um, I, don't, I don't think we had a release date of anything coming out yet. But Not just, yet. Uh, keep your ears open, and uh, um, hopefully we'll see it soon. Yeah, and uh, let's hope he's still feeling better from his uh, kidney stones. Yeah. All right, let's get on to this interview. All right, good night. Good night. Hey, Chad. It's Eric. Hey. Hey. Uh, welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast, uh, Chad. I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Jeff Unted. Hey, Chad. How's it going tonight? I'm doing great in yourself. Um, awesome. It's a little cold here. <laughs> yeah, we're like buried in snow and ice right now, so it's not great. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we got that big snowstorm, I think, a week ago, or maybe a couple weeks ago. We got like two feet of snow almost. Oh, wow. Where are you located? Uh, I'm in close to like the uh, Wilkes Bear era. Okay, yeah, yeah. you got hit. <laughs> yeah. So we had the problem when we had about six inches of snow, yeah. and then we had an ice storm, yeah. and then we had another three or four inches of snow on top of it. So it's a mess around here, absolute mess. Yeah, you can't mess with the upper part, you know, you, all that cold air. No, you sure can't. And we're right on the Mississippi River Valley area, so we get the plethora of weather here. You, you name it, the extreme heat to the extreme cold. <laughs> yeah, you get the uh, 10 minutes it will change weather, like my old stomping grounds, Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, Exactly, exactly. So um, let's get into this, right? So late Monday night, I received a frightening message from you, and it said, I'm in the ER my first thought was COVID-19, of course, like yeah. anybody else would say. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so um, can you kind of tell us about your medical emergency Monday night? Yeah, so I don't know how long this has been going on. I'm not the type of guy that just goes to the doctor. I, like, I don't believe in it. I'm like, ah, whatever. You know, I have the, the grandpa mentality <laughs> where it's like, I don't need a doctor. I'll drink some Pepsi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, long story short, I've been having like a lot of back pain and stuff like that, which I never have ever had, even drumming as long as I have. And so long story short, I go to the bathroom and it really hurts. And I'm like, what? And then all of a sudden, I mean, dude, I'm talking severe pain in my back to my groin area. And my groin's been hurting me recently. So I thought maybe I pulled something. Yeah. I felt something burst and I thought I bursted my appendix or my gallbladder because I have some st stomach issues. And long, long story short, I end up in the emergency room. I'm like, honey, I got to go. 
And she's like, do you want to go? I'll take you right now. I'm like, I can't, I can't stomach it. And then I get there and I'm dry heaving 25 times. The pain was that mm-hmm. severe. Mm-hmm. And with COVID going on, uh, my wife's sister works there and she's been like, it's, it's beyond crazy there. They couldn't even get me into the room for an hour to get me shot up with painkillers. Oh, wow. So um, I'm sitting there dry heaving in this bag and there's only like maybe four people in the waiting room. I was there for equivalent to about six hours um, and they couldn't really put me on a bed or anything because they were in the hallways working on COVID patients. That's how backed up they are. And you don't realize how bad COVID really is until you go into the battle zone, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and it was just, you know, it makes you reflect on life. And I was like looking straight up and going, I'm ready to go home. And he's like, nope, no, you're not. You're going to endure a little more pain, son. You're not ready. So I'm, I'm stuck here for as long as I'm allowed. So, okay, I have a brother-in-law that that suffers from kidney stones. Um, he's yeah. he's a avid beer drinker. He's an average uh, avid milk drinker. Um, so the, the, the in the in the doctors had told him years ago when he started having these issues, he said, "Hey, you know, you got to lay off milk, uh, cut back on your your beer drinking." And of course, that's not going to happen because that's just not his mo. Um, so, yeah. what did they tell you about your diet to, as far as helping? Uh, well, I mean. I vape. They're like, you got to cut the vaping. I don't know if anything's caused from that, but, you know, tobacco, caffeine, salt, um, which I would think sugar would be something in it, but it isn't. So, and I don't like sweet stuff. So I'm like, well, you're taking one good thing away salt. Can we take <laughs> away sugar and trade it for salt? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I kidney stones aren't something you get overnight it's you know it kind of equates to like uh smoking where you got to smoke and smoke and smoke and smoke to to really get you know cancer or copd or any of that kind of stuff but the more you damage your body it's like drinking you can damage your liver and before you know it you're a goner because of liver poisoning basically right so you got to drink a lot of water. That's what flushes out all those toxins. Um, I don't want to sound like WebMD or anything, but um, yeah, dude, kidney stones. And I'm not even exaggerating. My arms are tatted up. I rather get nine to twenty hours of tattoos in one sitting than ever endure the six hours that I had to endure. I mean, I blacked out. Uh, I dry heaved. I was in so much pain, I went outside to throw up and just laid on the parking lot um, floor. And the lady's like, sir, can you please get up? The floor is dirty. (laughs) I'm like, I don't care if it's on fire right now. I don't want to move. And long and behold, you got COVID going on, so you got to wear a mask. So every time you're dry heaving, you're smelling it, and not to be disgusting, (laughs) in your mask. (laughs) So, So, so you know, COVID didn't even cross my mind that I'm in a place where COVID patients are. All I cared about was shoot me up with whatever you got. I don't (laughs) care if it's gasoline and it will take away the pain. So they shot me up. Uh, It lasted for about six hours, the pain going away. And then when I got home, I think I passed it. So he thinks I might have had four kidney stones. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, Welcome to 2021, right? <laughs> um, I hope you're feeling better. Exactly. Well, Thank you. Yeah. S- symptomatically, how do you? I mean, how long do you think that you were having symptoms and you just didn't even realize it? Dude, I, I mean, like I said, it could have been a part of my life mm. because of my stomach. You know, like I would like eat something and then like 20 minutes I get the like hot flashes and f- and, and like belch for like eight hours like blue cheese and wings <laughs> and that is not fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know so it could have been the kidney stones upsetting my stomach because i felt that when the kidney stone was you know about to come out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it felt like a snake it was the weirdest feeling like it start to your rib cage in the back then it would move to the side 
and then it would move to your groin, then it would go back to your side, then it would go back to your – and it was like – the only way I can describe it is is if you've ever had a cramp in your toe or like even running and you get that like cramp, mm-hmm. imagine that in your upper top and your lower part all at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a big puss, so I know I couldn't <laughs> handle it. So. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 I mean – I don't cry at the Titanic or anything. I was like in like fetal position yeah. tears. Oh my goodness. Well, we're so glad you survived. Yeah. Yes. This, this, Thank you. This interview. There's a lot to be uh, appreciated, you know, in life. Then <laughs> after you go through kidney stones, you're like, you know what? Life ain't that bad. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, man, we've had this scheduled for a long time, so we couldn't lose you as a guest, you know? <laughs> so well, I saw your text and I was like, oh, crap, I was supposed to do the thing today. But then I realized, oh, wait, I don't even know what day it is. That's how much pain I was in. <laughs> Man. Well, let's talk music. Yeah. That's why we have you on here. So, um, yeah, let's not talk about kidney stones. <laughs> um, you're now an official member of the band Weapons of a Noob. You replaced yeah. uh, is Chris Manfrey. Is that how I say his last name? Manfrey? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who played uh, on the band's debut album. Um, how did this opportunity come your way? You know, it, it, as crazy as this sounds... COVID has done bad things for people and it's done wonders and it has made me work more Mm -hmm. in the studio. I built like a little tiny studio and I started to be, we're able to do some songs for people. And then I get a call from Mike uh, Ferretti, which is their producer. And he's like, what are you doing right now? And I'm like, obviously nothing. We're on lockdown. He's like, yeah, I know that, but like, what are your plans with, you know, Black Star Riders right now? And I'm like, we're doing nothing, no plans for anything. And he's like, well, would you be down on doing one song for us? I said, well, what's the band? He's like, the band's called Weapons of a New. They're pretty new. They, you know, they, they got some, you know, muscle behind them. And I said, well, send me something. Let me listen to it. He sent me a song called Sick Boy. And he's like, it's a chain smokers cover. But it didn't dawn on me until I recorded it. And I was like, yo. This song is really good. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, that's that song I was talking about. I'm like, oh, it's a cover. Well, what's their real stuff sound like? Because this one's really good. (laughs) And he's like, well, if the guys like the way you drum on this, they'll, you you know, we'll give you three more and then we'll take it from there. And then before you know it, I did the whole record and I fell in love with their music. But with this COVID going on, we couldn't see face to face. So it was like I had no clue what they wanted for drums I had a template of like what Mike kind of programmed and then I would send him my ideas. He'd be like, yeah, that's great. But they really like this double bass part. I'm like, of course they do stuff. I don't do ever, you know? So it was kind of like tool shedding that for a while. And, um, after that, you know, I got the gig and we finally met through the pandemic and I was really iffy. I'm like to their manager. I'm like, Matt, I really, I'm, I'm terrified of going, you know, and this was like, you know, um, April, mm-hmm. May-ish. Mm-hmm. And he's like, the guys just want to meet you. You got the gig, bro. They just want to meet you. So, dude, we hit it off like we were brothers from another mother. Right. And <laughs> it's ever it's been like ever since, you know, it's almost been a year. And, and March will be a year I've been with these guys, which is insane. And, you know, the, you kind of shed a, uh, a light on you know, you were, uh, perf- I guess, doing parts for you know, of the whatever song that they they sent you, your drum fills, um, and you're not seeing these guys face to face. You know, how much of a challenge was it for you to do this? And I know that it, you, yeah. musicians are asked to do this all the time, but when the perspective of becoming a band member, what challenge does, challenges did it bring to you saying, okay, I can't see these guys face to face. All I'm doing is fill, putting the drum fills in. How did, how did that all work out? It was just like praying on it and just giving me the right, you know, motivation and not run away from it. Cause there was a couple parts that were challenging that it's not that I couldn't play it. I just never played it. You know, it wasn't in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that are in your wheelhouse and you're great at. And there's stuff that takes you out of your comfort zone and you get a little scared. You're like, well, maybe this isn't my kind of cup of tea. But then as I listen to the other songs, I'm like, all right, I know what I can approach here. And I know what I got to work on here. So I was like playing up some of my double bass parts and 
doing stuff that again, like I said, was out of my wheelhouse, but I, I, you know, plowed through it and, um, you know, they, they loved everything I played. Oh, so cool. Um, yeah. As far as second album material, material goes, um, yeah. what, you know, what, when can we expect uh, the second full length album to come out? It, you know, was, is this something that we're looking at, um, maybe towards after the COVID lockdown is yeah. or something like that, or how's it going to work for you guys? Yeah, that's a good question. So the record's been done since April, May ish. Um, and we just been, you know, put out sick boy in October. And, you know, when you put out a record, that's it. You got no other legs to, you know, keep mm-hmm. pressing on. So it's like putting out a single. I think we're talking about putting out another single in February. This one did really well for not touring or even really being on a major label. Um, so we were really blessed for that, but now we're thinking about putting out another single and then see how that does. And that should get us through March and then decide what we want to do. Because I mean, the world today is Spotify and you streaming one song Mm -hmm. and it's a singles market today. I mean, one of my favorite bands that I really got into since the pandemic and I, it's a shame that I didn't really follow them because our producer for breaking Ben mixed one of their records. And he always told me about the band, but it was like, ah, they're too heavy. I'm not digging it, but it's bring me the horizon. Mm. And they just put out, you know, an EP and, you know, they were putting out one song at a time. And I was like, this song's great. And then a couple months later, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this song's great. And, you know, that band is just, they're amazing. They write great songs, good musicians, and you know, they're doing it through a pandemic as well. And I think a lot of bands were just putting out singles, you know, I mean, Deftones put out a record, Corey Taylor put out a record. So there were people still putting out records, but you got to look at it. Stone Sour is not some small band either. So they got some longevity with that. Mm -hmm. Same with like Papa Roach or bring me the horizon, but like weapons of a new is a pretty new band, even though they've been doing it for a while. This new record is definitely a mature sounding record for this band in the amount of time that they've grown and getting, you know, Mike involved brought a lot, to the table and freddie does a lot of the writing with ray the lead singer and when you're coming in and you're like all right the the song's already sent to me now what do you want to drum on it now to me being biased because i'm a drummer drums make or break a song i don't care how good your hook is if you don't have the right drum beat and the right parts you don't have the complete package. So it's very important that I play for the song and write for the song and not write for myself and go, I want to be a modern drummer. You know, it's like, (laughs) what is the guitar player saying right here? What is the lead singer saying here? If I put a bunch of fills, it's taken away from the listener understanding what he's saying. So over the years of playing with Breaking Ben and, and Black Label and all that, you know, it wasn't woe is me kind of thing, but now it's like being more of a producer and sitting back and going drums are like an afterthought. Now I'm concentrating on melody. I still do my little tinkering here and there and my chat isms, but you know, being more selective nowadays, I just trying to be more mature and, and, and proper. Gotcha. So to take out uh, weapons of a new out of this next question more of a Mm -hmm. generalized question as you said releasing singles because of what tangible sales are non-existent anymore do you do you feel though in in the in the in the industry now is the way to to make make it i guess more now is to release a single or singles you know a line of singles instead of releasing a full-length album out or do you feel that the album or an ep is still the 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 staple of creativity i guess maybe yeah that's funny you bring that up because a real good friend of mine who i actually drum with for a while is mike orlando from adrenaline mob and uh we were just talking we haven't talked in a while and 
we were just catching up and I was like, well, you remember when we were kids and you heard Allison Chains Wood on the radio and you prayed that it would be on yeah. in five more minutes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't get that feeling anymore because we're spoiled. We can play Wood until we're blue in the face on Spotify and just keep on on constant loop where the music doesn't have the value it has anymore in my eyes you know it's like you write this record you pour all your heart your blood your sweat your tears into this record and it's, it's like your woman cooking a dish for three hours and it takes 10 minutes to eat it mm-hmm. You're spot you put on. all this time and then all these people start playing your song but it doesn't hold any weight now because they got other bands they can listen to and if you give them a whole record they've listened to it now they move on to another record or they don't even listen to the whole record they just want to listen to the one song back in the day you would have to buy the cd just to get that one song right. and then they started doing cassette tapes where you could buy the singles you know when i worked at sam goody back in the day and you would buy like a hip-hop like twist I think it's twisted by Keith Sweat, and that was the popular thing. And they would just buy the single. That's all they wanted to hear. They didn't care about the record. Right. Records now today are just obsolete. They want to hear that one song, but it's like, but we have more of a resume for you to listen to. But now, because of Spotify and all those, not to you know crap on them, but the art is gone. The the mystique is gone. You know, it's you're you're not waiting in line five hours or nine hours to get a record anymore. You just pay ten ninety nine and you get it. Yeah, absolutely. So that present, that that whole like anticipation is gone. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like YouTube. You know, I I love YouTube. It's crack for me. I fixed dishwashers and done lights because of YouTube, but it does not make you smarter because you would have to go to Builder Square and buy a book and have to read how to fix a dishwasher and and get shocked and go, well, they didn't say that in the book. <laughs> you know, same thing with musician. You wouldn't know the greatest drummers out there. You would have to go to the gig to find it or see that band. Now you can go on YouTube and watch anything. So very true. Yeah. So the competition is right in front of your eyes. You know what you got to work on, or you know what you got to steal from another person because they can break it down. Yeah. It's not like that yeah. back in the day. Absolutely. You know, when I had to learn parts from drums where I had to hit play and pause on a VHS tape, <laughs> you know, and on a VCR, and, and it was still all squiggly and you still couldn't see it. But it made your brain go somewhere because you'd listen to a song and you go, I don't know how the drummer's doing that because we didn't have that technology at that time. So true. Yeah. I, I still got so. my, I still got my VCR and I haven't touched it in ten years. <laughs> I, I, I I just realized I don't think I've touched my DVD player in probably about three. <laughs> you know. Dude, I don't even touch Blu-ray anymore. Yeah. yeah, I just go on Netflix. Yeah, that's very true. You know, I think it's it's a blessing and it's a curse. It's like Pro Tools, where you record and you got everything on a grid. You're on a metronome, and if you mess up the verse, that's all right. We'll just punch you in. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll play the whole song over. No, we'll just punch you in the verse. We'll just cut and paste your drum part. Just make sure it's on the grid. Yeah. What, 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 that doesn't make you a better player. That's like putting, you know, a temporary bandaid on it. And it's like, oh, well, you know, if it doesn't heal properly, oh, well, <laughs> you know, we'll try again. Oh, very good. Yeah. Jeff, take away. So, so with this new band, uh, Weapons of the New, uh, I think you kind of briefly mentioned who the members or the first names of the me- members, but can you tell our listeners that might not be aware uh, who the other band members are? Of Weapons? Yeah. yeah. Um, we got Reno, uh, the bass player. We have Freddie, um, Ray, the lead singer. Uh, Freddie's the, the brains behind the monster. And then I brought in Kevin my one of my best friends who's in my other band called walking with lions brought him into the band uh we finally we haven't really made the announcement yet but um kevin's the new added person to the band and and he brings a lot of positivity and and great chemistry for this band so we're looking forward to the future with that Nice. So cool. Uh, you have played drums for Breaking Benjamin, Black Label Society, Black Star Riders. And how does 
weapons of a new differ for you artistically opposed to uh, participating with these other bands? Is it is this stylistically? I know all, every band that you've played with is stylistically different, but yeah. what you yeah. know, what, what how it, has it changed for you artistically? The the difference is I'm out of the B's. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Now I'm in the W's. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, the, the the different difference is the, the difference is I'm a part now with this band, and you know we all come together equally. Right. It's not like I'm a contractor and I paint your house and then I go paint another house. Mm-hmm. I, I paint the house, and if I mess it up, well, then it's out of my pocket. Um, you know, it's it's cool to be like a partner in this, um, which I haven't been in since my first band called switch and, um, being a a part of, of something, if it goes down in flames, you go down with it. You're not like, see, ya. (laughs) it's been fun while it lasted, but your boat's going down. I'm jumping ship. You know, you're in it to win it. And if it goes down, we all go down. If it goes up, we all go up. So, you know, being in that, I wasn't a big songwriter in this uh, this record that we just did because I wasn't in the band at that time. You know, mm-hmm. um, what Chris brought to the band with like Kill Shot and all that, you know, he played some really cool stuff. I wouldn't say I played better stuff or worse stuff. That's someone's opinion. But I just brought something different like I've done through my career of drumming. You know, I don't. I never say the the best drummer in the world or the best guitar player in the world. I always say we're blessed equally, just differently. Uh You know, so there's no wrong or right. You know, it's just all about an opinion at that point. You can't say that smoke on the water is better than Hey Jude or Hey Jude's better than smoke on the water. That's all about an opinion. You can't prove it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you can't say the best drummer, or the best guitar player, or this drummer was so much better for this band. That's an opinion. But, you know, there was some really cool stuff that the previous drummer, Chris, brought to the table. Cool. Nice. Right, so uh, Black Star Writers. So you were you were just recently you did you did the, al- the album Another State of Grace. Mm-hmm. And that was a, just a killer album. Uh, Thank we, you. We recently talked to uh, Ricky Warwick and uh, um, I know uh Damon Johnson didn't play on that particular record, but been a big fan of Black Star Writers. He was still there in spirit. How about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was that experience like? It was great. It was one of my first times that I spent more time in a massage chair than I ever did on the drums. It was like <laughs> painless. It was like, wait a minute, is is this where you become the boss and you just go golfing the whole time and make money? <laughs> You know, it it was just painless. It was just a great vibe. Um, Jay um, was an amazing producer. And his concept, which is the first that I ever did, not saying best or worst uh, kind of thing, but he was a guy that said, we are do one song a day. Not five songs the drummer does, and then everyone else does it. Everyone's going to play together in the same room like a show. Chad, you're going to do your drums. But we're only going to do one song. We're going to concentrate on everybody, every day, one song. So I would do the drums, hopefully in one or two takes. I was done by then. But probably I would have to do it two takes or three takes because Scott said, good damn it, after my take every time. And I'm like, dude, this isn't for you. It's for me. (laughs) You know, like, shut up. You can fix your part after I'm done. So... He'd be like, damn it, damn it. I'm like, Scott, shut up. But uh, other than that, you know, it, it, Robbie and I usually did it in one, two takes. And then Scott and Christian would do their thing. Ricky would come in the next morning and do vocals for that song while we were prepping for the next song. So you didn't get burnt out on five songs going like, where are we at, bro? Like every song sounds the same. It's my drum part sucks. If you had a problem with that song that day, you could fix it mm. after listening to like Christian's guitar part. Yo, that's cool. 
you didn't do that in pre-pro. I know. I just came up with that. Cool. I got another idea I want to try. Can can you punch me in real quick? And then, you know, hence the punching in. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's you, great. Yeah. Uh, you have been labeled as a hired gun of sorts in the rock and roll community. Is that a label, yeah. is that, a label that you embrace? Or is that some, like sometimes I know some artists don't really like that label, but how do you? Yeah, it's like being called a stripper and they'd rather be called exotic <laughs> dancers. <laughs> <laughs> or a drummer. They want to be called musicians. Um, no, I mean, higher gun, it, it is what it is, but dude, most of the time I'm so attached to the band that I'm a member of the band. It's just not on a piece of paper and meaning bread, <laughs> but, um, I'm in it to win it. I'm a team player, whether I'm a higher gun or a member of the band. You know, if I believe in something and someone believes in me, I'll go 110%. And, um, with black star riders, you know, yeah, I'm a higher gun, but with the record, I was a partner in that whole record, writing ideas, coming up with ideas with them. So I was treated like a member in that aspect, but yeah, that's cool. you know, you, you, you have to look at your role. You're not the singer. You're not writing the songs. You're there to accompany with the beats, but I don't look at a drummer as like some timekeeper. Again, I look at us as a part of the conversation. If it's interesting and I have something to say, then someone will say something back. If it's not something that they like, they won't educate it and want to talk to me. So you got to play nice in, in, in people's sandboxes if you want to play. And if you're like, yeah, you know, I know a paradiddle and a paradiddle diddle, and uh, they're going to be like, yeah, cool. That doesn't write, you know, uh, another state of grace. Yeah. Okay, I'm you're my right. My favorite songs on that one. <laughs> yeah, dude. And every, I was getting text messages when the single came out. They're like, yo, bro, I love the Flogging Molly cover. And I was like, what did you just say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love how you guys ripped off, like, you, you know, the Flogging Molly style. I go, do your research. Yeah. There's a band called Finn Lizzy. Right. <laughs> you know, like their Irish jigs were way before Flog and Molly. Nothing to disrespect yeah. Flog and Molly because they're great. But like, like Flog and Molly and, um, you know, all the Irish anthem songs. Yeah. And it was like, no, dude, do your research. <laughs> you know, it's like, I love, I love your band, you know, uh, Poison. It was like, what? <laughs> we're not poison bro like you know it was funny like uh when i first got in the gig with black star riders we had a a big show in sweden and a guy pretty big you know um what do you call them um magazine writers was like the band is amazing you know lineup is great you know the music's amazing if you like dad rock <laughs> I was like, yo, you guys are dads. I'm not. They're like, screw you, Chad. I'm like, I'm just saying. You're so old, you owe Jesus a buck. But um, it, w it was pretty funny. But, I mean, you know, Black Star Riders is an all-star group. I mean, there are some big bands that we've all been in. Damon Johnson, I mean, taking the step down shows you the character in that man where he's like, a lead singer for brothers Kane. And now is just doing harmonies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But Ricky has such a, a voice of, of glass that just cuts right through you. I mean, it's like a signature, you know, it's like, it's like, wow, you know, it's Ricky Warwick, you know? Um, and for him to be filling the shoes of Phil line, you know, that that's something that, you know, you can't just find that, every guy to do and ricky is a profound lyricist i mean he wrote yeah. some really great lyrics and you know with weapons of a new you know being with those guys i was never really big into lyrics until i got into black star riders and and really listened to you know ricky's lyrics now weapons of a new where ray has some really great lyrics mm -hmm. so it's it's nice to finally not think of paradiddles all the time <laughs> yeah. yeah so the the newest album you said um you had some writing process with that. What can you just kind of walk us through, like a a song? What what uh, what your style is for approaching to write a song? Yeah. So like, let's let's take like you, you're talking about the Black Star Rider stuff. Well, no, back to Weapons of a New. Oh, some Weapons. New stuff. Yeah. So Weapons is like anything I approach. I listen to the song. 
I'm I'm like a guy that like if I date a girl, I don't care if she's a multimillionaire. If I can't dig her, I'm not going to hook up with her. I'm not a good like liar. If I if the music does not talk to me, I don't want to play on it. It's just yeah. I want to be honest to the artist and give them my all. And if I am not feeling it, I can't give it my all. With Weapons of a New, there was a lot of substance to these songs. And you know, when you have a fake drum beat, you know, I have, the, uh, I have a shirt that says drum machines have no soul. <laughs> you can program it, but if you don't have the drummer dictating what it needs at that time, you're playing against what a producer is like, well, it's just a drum beat. But again, a drum beat really does dictate where the song's going to go. But with the COVID, no, nobody was in the room together to write. So I had to go, okay, what can I do? with nobody here around me telling me what to do. So it was like listening to sick boy. I listened to the single for the chain smokers and said, okay, this version that we have is a little bit different. How can I still put my Chad signature on it, but still keep it, you know, paying homage to the song. And, uh, I just came up with what I came up with and, and Freddie and everyone loved it. And I was like, okay, that, that's cool. Next song. And then I listened to the next song. And I was like, son of a bitch. It's <laughs> double bass all the way through the chorus. Why does it have to be double bass? So I would try to fight with it and go, there's so many bands that play double bass. There's no rule in, in the book of music to say, okay, because it's a heavy riff, you got to play double bass. I mean, dude, we listen to Unchained or Welcome to the Jungle. There's no double bass, and it's still a heavy song. Yeah. Double bass is it's easy way out. It's like playing a seven string or eight string or nine string or whatever to make it sound heavier. It's all about taking a six string guitar and putting attitude in that six string guitar. Mm. And if you can do it on a six string, you definitely can do it on a seven string. So I approach the drums with not double bass, but how can I make this part be heavy? So I use the Van Halen mentality. Just play it with power and play it with conviction and it will make it heavy. I mean, corn corn's not a big double bass band, but they pick their spots when they want to do it. Even, you know, Pantera, Vinnie Paul, God rest in peace, amazing metal drummer, but he played funky, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I try to approach on this record was like bringing more like an Abe Deftones heaviness um, to it. And not so much, you know, double bass, old school metal. Uh, yeah, very good. And trying to make it current. You know, again, there's so many bands, five finger, straight double bass all the time. That's cool. Let them do it. What can we bring? Something different. The world needs something different. Like I'm watching the news today and watching our, you know, the Capitol, like just get bombarded by republicans i'm a republican this is not what we should do exactly yeah you know you're making us look stupid especially like being a christian and people going you're going to hell well i'm not that kind of christian so you don't put that name on me mm -hmm. i'm not that guy but unfortunately someone does something that dumb you get blamed for all this stupidity and you know it's like it's like those kind of things where it's like just because I play double bass doesn't make me a metal player. Just because I'm a, you know, a Republican doesn't make me hate anybody or this or that. You know, there's good cops, bad cops. You know, there's bad good everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so when, you know, when I play, I don't want to be pigeoned into one thing. And so I'm very classy at the way I approach it. I, I don't want to be like, yo, you have no clue what you're talking about. I want to see what they want. And I want to meet them halfway. And I think this record will prove that. There's some parts where I play some metal stuff that was way out of my wheelhouse that I would never do. But it might take my fans and go, wow, I never knew he could do that. Mm. And that's kind of, you know, my approach with this record. There was things I didn't think I had in me. And there's parts where I'm like, I'm a versatile drummer. I've been blessed with that. So let's show the world what I can do that they've never heard. And I mean, you do so many records and so many tours, you're going to repeat some of the same licks and the same beats and all that. That's really hard. 
you know, to not do. And that's what I was trying to strive to do something different. Uh, well, yeah. well said. Yeah. I can't. You said that so well. In, in with the political climate being what it is right now, you well said. Uh, but thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to switch gears on you here, your exit from Breaking Benjamin was documented as a circumstance of creative difference. I'm not trying to dig for any type. Of, no, no. Uh, I mean it's 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 been no. a decade now, yeah, so yeah. we can talk about it. Right. Yeah. So I. It, not to even get into that, I just wanted to know, as your exit from that band, how has that stage in your life uh, changed you artistically as a drummer? Did what what did it do differently for you? Um, artistically, I would say more faithfully, it changed. It, it built me a stronger base for my faith in my Christianity because. You're walking away. Everyone thinks I got fired from Breaking Ben. I quit. Um, the, the the real truth is Ben and I never saw eye to eye on writing. And I blamed him for for being an a-hole. But now I, I don't blame him. I blame us both. We were young and dumb. And, you know, the band was huge at that time. And no one wanted to say, well, that part sucks. No one wants to hear what you write sucks, you know? And and Ben was a great songwriter, and he thought the drum should sound like this. And I begged to differ. I said, if your drum beats, if you like that, you might as well hire A.C. Slater by Sl- Saved by the Bell, because he would be the perfect drummer for what you want. <laughs> you know, it was like those kind of digs. And this is my friend here, you know? And... Uh, you know, Ben taught me a lot about writing s- hooks, and I will never take that for granted, you know. And there were things that I disagreed with him on on a lot of different p- playing fields, but I grew a lot from it. You know, I uh, I was more wise in my choices and in, in the words that I, I said. I didn't say many nice things as the ending battle to Ben, but it was eight years of of torment that I wasn't being appreciated that I felt was being disrespected. And I, I, I just, I prayed on it and I said, I gotta, I gotta protect myself. You know, I'm not, I don't play drums for, for the Benjamins, no pun intended, but (laughs) I play it because I've been blessed and to heal the world with my drumming. Um, and I've never signed up for women, free booze or money. I did it because I love what I do and how I make people have a great time. And when you don't share that bond anymore, not saying Ben played for booze or women or anything like that, but when you get kind of jaded in the business and you got stipulations, you need to put this record out by this time. If it isn't, you're not, we're not putting out your record. So you almost become that dad that gets beat up at work and take it out on the family Mm, Mm -hmm. and being the higher gun that I was, I felt like I was told that my job was not good enough. Mm. And so I basically quit in, in the respect of saying, I feel that I let you down. I feel that I'm not good enough for you. You deserve better. In layman terms, it didn't sound like that when I verbally said it, but um, (laughs) if I could take it back, I would. But I also showed uh, I'm sticking up for myself. You're not going to talk to me like this, especially in my house. And it happened in my house. And, you know, I've reached out to him. I just texted him about a month ago and apologized. I didn't have to. But I want to be the better man, and I want to make amends with Ben. You know, I still love him. I, I, I still care for him. I would never wish COVID or death on him. But I think, you know, it's time for him and I to sit down mm. and to look towards the future of, of what could happen. You know, I mean, God willing that if God wants the band back together, that means me, Mark, and Aaron, and Chad, and Ben, he will put that together. And if not, that's another chapter in our life, and we close that book, and we just pick up the pieces, and we move on. Uh, yeah, well said. Yeah. Uh, your exit from Breaking Benjamin also opened doors f- for you. Uh, your time in Black Label Society and Black Star Riders. Yeah. Uh, did you find your exit from Breaking Benjamin more of an opportunity than and maybe than a, a loss? Uh, 
man, you know, when people say, man, you got everything, you know, you're so lucky. Yeah, I was super blessed and, and I'm humbled and privileged for for those um, things that have occurred in my life. But also think about being at the top and then falling straight down on your face. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, dude, there was times in my faith where I was like, why? Why would you do this to me? I put you first. I prayed every night. Why would why would you do this to me? And he goes, I didn't do this to you because I don't think you deserve it. I did it to you because people don't want you. It's making you an ugly person. That's not who you are. That's not what you signed up for drums, Chad. You signed up because you love it. Not because you want to be famous and on MTV and sell out arenas. You did it because you loved it. You play like that, Chad, in cover bands in front of 20 people, and you play like that in front of 40,000. That's who you are. And you're not happy. So I'm taking you out of this equation. And he did. And then playing with Black Label and Black Star Riders, dude, these are iconic bands. They didn't sell the records that Breaking Ben but dude, these guys have laid so much groundwork. Like, you know, Zach Wilde, no yeah. doubt about it. You walk into a bar, you're like, yo, Ben Burnley, not so much. Mm -hmm. You would think he would sell shoes, <laughs> you know, yeah. and yeah. it's not a dig on him. He's just more of a plain looking dude. He does not have that vibe of like, oh my gosh, it's Jonathan Davis from corn, but he's a great songwriter. And, and, and his name holds, you know, the weight of his identity. There's people like that. Um, but he just had that presence. And Zach was one of the coolest guys I ever worked for ever. Um, just such a class act, but you know, I mean, then playing with Finn Lizzie, never in a million years would I ever think I would be playing with an icon like, like Scott Gorm and hearing the stories like, yeah, but I hung out with Freddie Mercury playing ping pong. I'm like, what, <laughs> what, Mine is, yeah, I kicked it with Corey Taylor at the rainbow. You know, it's like not Thin Lizzy. And he, he's like, yeah, you know, we we opened up for ZZ Top and, you know, people were sitting down and this guy in the front was being like screaming at the crowd. Like, aren't you guys loving this band? This band's amazing. And he goes, you won't even believe who it is. I'm like, I don't know, Scott. You've told me some crazy stories. What? He's like, it's Bog Skaggs. I'm like, no way, bro. Like, Come on, <laughs> oh. you know, like Bob Skaggs in the front row trying to get the crowd into it. It's un <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, he was so jaded with the times today where I'd wear a hat to the side. He'd be like, hey, bud, your hat's on the other side. You got to turn it to the front. I'm like, no, Scott, that's the look. <laughs> um, there, there was a time we did a festival. I, lo I love him. Um, we did a festival and it was with extreme and he was like chad i want you tomorrow to kill it on those drums and make exterminator eat it and i go you mean extreme he goes yeah that band extreme <laughs> i'm like i'm like scott you ever heard of a band called smashing pumpkins and it's a hint it's not the shit you did when you did in the streets he's like screw you bud <laughs> yeah so i mean i mean dude everything that i look back has just been a building block to my life. Mm. And I, I won't regret any decisions that I've done, did, or, or in, in my life, dumb or good. It's what makes our character. It's what gives us our battle scars. That's what makes great songs. You can't play the blues if you're a millionaire. Mm. You got to go through some hurt to write about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, you know, just thanking God every day to, to breathe another second of air. You know, especially going into emergency room with, you know, something like that. And I'm not trying to get like Jimmy swaggered on you guys, but <laughs> literally I thought I was going to die. And I looked up and I said, I'm ready to go home. And he goes, Chad, what my son went through isn't even a tenth what you think you're going through. Mm. And then that's what made me go. You know what? If that's the pain he went through to help us out. I can survive this, <laughs> you know, I'm allowed to even take a shot, you know, so you really start thanking everything that you have, every privilege. I can die a happy man saying I've sold out the arenas. Yeah. I've been in modern drummer. I've touched and healed a lot of people, I'm even talking, you know, and, and helping them through suicide and this and that I've done a lot of good and I've done some bad, but I've done more good than bad. Mm -hmm. 
And when, when it is my time, I want to be known for touching people through the spirit, not through the rock star. Ah, very well, good. Sir. Okay. Well, I got one more question for you and then we'll leave you alone for the night. Deal? Yeah. Okay. So you had touched upon the mystique of rock and roll about, I don't know, about 20 minutes ago in this, in this interview. Um, which le- leads me to a, a question that we used to ask all the time uh, to artists, and that is um, the mystery of rock and roll. You know, the internet has taken yeah. the mystery out of rock and roll so yeah. so much to, you know, social media. And it, it's one of those kind of things where social media is what it is. It's social media. It it, it seems like it has really squelched um, the mystery of rock and roll. Like we. I grew up wondering if what you know, what were Led Zeppelin and Kiss? What were they truly all about? Were they even humans? You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, um, but now you know we know that Robert Plant he goes grocery shopping in downtown Austin, Texas. Now we've seen it. It's 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 there. Um, yeah, you, social distancing for musicians is what I call it now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do you miss the mystery of rock and roll, or or do you welcome the 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 accessibility now? Uh, well, let's go back to the days of MTV where you hear doom, 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 <laughs> right? That was your social media. Right. Yeah. Right. No, nobody could talk about it. Only time you talked about it is when you got with your homies and, and sat and said, did you see what happened with Axl Rose <laughs> on MTV? Or did you see that? That was your source of, of music, social media. Right. Now everybody has an opinion like an a-hole and they all stink. <laughs> where it's like everybody has something to say politically, religiously, and musically. And with YouTube and you see a 12 year old drummer trying to, you know, post a video and these people are like, yeah, you might as well give it up. It's like, he's 12 years old. Like, why would you say that to somebody? I mean, dude, the words cut like knives and razor blades And you, this kid could be the next John Bonham, but you just stopped it. Um, but with social media today, it, I think, again, it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Facebook is great for me to connect with my fans, but it's not for me to rant and say, or, hey, here's my chicken, Marcella. I'm going to bed, everybody. I don't care about your chicken, Marcella. All right? Like, just tell me. Or don't show me a picture of your new car because I can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Instagram and social media to me is all about the likes. Like my son, dad, you won't believe how many followers I have. I have a thousand followers now on this stupid thing I did. It's making a perception of life not real. Right. Kim Kardashian, no offense, God forgive me, but she isn't like that without makeup. So true. Yeah. So true. So let me see what is in the real side of you. Quit playing this fake image that you really are. Why do people like Ron Jeremy? Maybe not now because he's in prison, but people liked Ron Jeremy because he had a hairy butt. (laughs) (laughs) And everyone goes, I have a hairy butt. Okay, great. He doesn't wax it. This is normal. There's no more normal reality anymore. Like every woman is fake looking on a magazine it's photoshopped and every woman that's trying to achieve that commits suicide because they know they can never get that point Mm -hmm. and that's the scary thing same thing for musicians i'll never be that good i never put out a video on youtube to make people quit drumming i put it to put a spark under their butt and go if i can do this you can do it i'm not a, a magician that disappears a quarter and will never tell you how to do it i'll tell you how to do it but you'll never disappear it like i do That's why everyone's blessed equally, just differently. So with social media, we get so caught up in that wormhole that we can't even talk to. Dude, I text my wife in the next room now. Yeah. Getting off my lazy butt and saying hi. Social distancing to me is planned to keep us away from each other. I agree. I agree 100%. When was the last time you could hug and feel sincere about it? It's been a long time. And know that, oh, crap, I wonder if that person has COVID. Yeah. Or how about this? You, you shutting down everything. You can open up strip clubs but close down churches. Spot on. Yeah. That makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Or you can have a riot right now, but you can't have bands on t- uh, at concerts. Yep. But if we're a rock and roll band and we're rebels, 
we're afraid to go out because of the COVID. We're not rock and roll. Yeah. I mean, That's where it goes back to you can't play the blues if you're a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Sid Vicious would be like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the COVID. I'm going out. Rest me. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are out of questions. Yeah. Um, and you have been a great storyteller. Um, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. But as far as on the promotional plugging end of things, is there anything that we left out that we did not cover for you? No, I, I, I greatly appreciate you guys taking the time, uh, even through the circumstances and, and plugging weapons of a new, I mean, that's yeah. my band right now. And I'm putting my focus into that and looking for the future of what, you know, beholds with the new record when it comes out, hopefully 2021. Yeah. Um, but if it isn't, the Lord has something better in the works. So it's just, it's just about patience is the most important virtue. If you go by that and you love your enemy, you'll make it through life. Well said. Nice. Well, yeah, we look forward to hearing it. Yeah, and you've been such a, a, a great guest. You are welcome to come back anytime that you want. We'll Thank you. Open arms. Um, this is how it's going to work. Jeff is the editing wizard over here, so I think we're about two weeks behind on our episodes. So uh, when yours is ready to be edited and ready to go, uh, I'll make sure that you are the first person to receive the download for it. And, awesome. And, Thank you. Yeah, and then please share it to wherever you possibly can. And uh, we we really look forward to having you on sometime in the future so we can Absolutely. Go see you play live yeah. and enjoy your, your drumming abilities. So it's going to be awesome. So um, other than that, we want to thank you for joining the Nothing Shocking podcast tonight. And like I said, I'll be in touch in a couple weeks. Sound good? Thank you guys so much. God bless you. And please, please, please stay safe. Absolutely. All thank right. you. Good night. Good night.
If they ever take from you, then you plug out.